Hi everyone, welcome back to the AI language. Today we are building an MCP server that can execute commands on terminal on your local MacBook. So this means you can ask, you know, uh, AI apps like Claude for desktop to run commands on your computer and send back the output just like using a terminal, but through AI. So here's a preview of what we'll actually test at the end. And it's absolutely amazing. Let me tell you that. And what I've done is basically, can you create a directory called Claude output? make a file inside it called terminal underscore server underscore test dot txt. And then it says, you know, I'll help you create directly and file as requested. So let's ask Claude, can you open this using code, the terminal server test dot txt file? And let's before that add some text. So can you add the text? I successfully made my first MCP server to this file and then can you open this using code the terminal underscore server dot txt file okay. so let's send this message so here you have it so guys this is isn't this amazing you know you have made actually an mcp server that can actually run terminal commands and you used a large language model on an app which is your mcp client the cloud desktop app and you actually control your computer by creating a file adding some text to it with the smiley and then opening it in code before we begin if you enjoy learning about AI coding and automation, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us bring more tutorials your way. So just a quick overview of MCP again. So MCP stands for model context protocol. It is a system that lets AI. So all, you know, your large language models hosted on apps like cloud desktop IDs or tools or any other app. And you can build your own app as well over here, which is called a MCP client. And this helps this AI interact with external tools and fetch information. And this is done through MCP servers. The servers do basically three kinds of things. They can provide resources or data and files, etc. So that's one primitive. There's another primitive, which is called tools. So the servers can run or execute commands or actions on the behalf of the large language model. So that is called the second primitive, which is tools. And the third is that the server can actually provide sample prompts to the large language model to help guide its behavior. And that's the, the prompts are the third primitive. Today we are going to focus on tools and we are going to build an MCP server that basically exposes a tool that the LLM can call from the app, which is going to be Claude desktop, which is going to be our MCP client. And our server is going to then execute that particular terminal command. So it will be a shell command that is going to be executed on the terminal and send back the output to the client. So as a first step, let's install this client, right? And you can do that by searching for Claude desktop and let's search for that. And let's click on download over here and you get to this website for downloading it and just click on Mac OS because we are on Mac OS windows folks can actually use the windows link over here. So let's wait for a minute for this to download. All right. So once it's downloaded, let's just open this and drag Claude to applications over here. Now launch Claude by typing Claude over here and press open. Let's click on open. So now you need to log in. So let's log in with our Google account. So if you're using Claude for the first time, you need to enter your full name. All right. So once you've signed in, you'll see a welcome screen like this. So good afternoon, the AI language. And uh, we have the Claude 3.7 Sonnet model over here. This is the desktop app for Claude for Mac OS. And um, it will give you 40 messages for free per day. So you don't need to actually pay initially uh, to do this tutorial. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is to install Python. So if you already have Python installed, you can check for the version over here. You can type Python three dash dash version. And for example, we have 3.9.6, but we need 3.10 or higher. So what we need to do is we need to install Python for our Mac. And uh, you can actually follow this uh, video on our website, which is install Python on a MacBook. If you're on Windows or Linux, you can follow a similar um, you know, steps from the website for installing Python. So to install the latest version of Python, we can open a new browser window and say install Python. And let's go to the download Python page over here. All right, so let's click on download Python 3.13.2 and let's wait for the download to complete. All right, so once this is completed, you can actually open this and you get an install Python window like this. Uh, there's an introduction, let's click continue. Uh, there's a readme over here. So let's click continue over here and there's a license. I'm going to accept it. I'm going to use the standard installation and not going to customize for now. And let's enter our password. And this is not going to install Python for us. 
All right, so we have Python installed now. Let's move the installer to the bin. So this is going to actually open this Python 3.13 uh, folder over here and it's going to show you all the things that are installed, including the IDLE. Now let's go back to the terminal. Let's type which Python 3 and this shows you that this is installed to user local bin Python 3. So we can now type Python 3 version. And we see that our Python 3 is now 3.13.2. This actually satisfies our version requirement for 3.10 and higher. We're good with this now. Now next we want to install UV, which is a fast package manager for Python that helps us install and run dependencies. So to install that, we're going to paste this command and you can find this in the description. You press enter. So let's wait for some time for this to get installed. All right, so there's a permission denied error and you might want to then and we can see that the error is due to, you know, the ownership of local being with root. So the local directory is inside our home directory. So we can actually change the permission over here. So use this command for this, enter your password, and then let's verify if the ownership has been updated. And yes, we can see that the ownership is now updated over here. So on this permission fail, you might be tempted to run this, you know, with sudo, but uh, running with sudo might install this as root, which could cause permission issues later. So let's not do that. And let's update this uh, permission like this. And let's not try to install UV again and see if it works. All right, great. So everything's installed. Let's source our environment file so that we can recognize the command UV. And let's type UV dash dash version and we can see that UV is now installed. So this is the package manager that we wanted. If you're on a Windows machine, you can actually follow the install instructions on the UV page on GitHub by Astral. And if you scroll down over here, you have the installation over here. All right, so now we are going to create the MCP directory structure. So MCP is our root directory and inside this there's servers and we might make multiple servers for the current server that we're making, which is, which is what we're calling as terminal server. We're going to make a new folder over here and this is that directory structure. We're also going to make a workspace directory so that all the work that, uh, you know, Claude's desktop app does for us using our MCP server is done inside this workspace directory. So if, if it runs a terminal command to do something to create a folder, for example, or directory, it actually does it inside the workspace directory. So let's press enter now. Let's change to our terminal server directory. So just to reiterate, MCP will save everything related to MCP, including our servers, which will be inside the servers directory and there'll be a dedicated workspace inside the workspace directory over here. Each server will have its own folder. For now, I've just created one, which is terminal server. So now we are going to initialize a Python project inside terminal server. For that, we just type UV in it and it's done that. Now let's create a virtual environment. So for that, we type UV VNV and let's activate it. Now this creates a virtual environment, which keeps our projects dependencies separate from the system's Python installation. Now we need to install the MCP package, which allows our server to communicate with Claude. So for that, we'll do UV add MCP CLI and press enter. All right, so that's now installed. So now let's write the code to execute terminal command. So first create a new file, terminal underscore server.py. Now let's head over to VS code and let's click on open over here. So we see the MCP folder over here that we just created and we see the servers over here and we open our terminal server. So let's open this. So I'm going to trust the authors over here and then let's go to our terminal underscore server.py file. So first we are going to import the necessary code. We import the required libraries. Sub process lets us run terminal commands and fast MCP helps us set up an MCP server. The workspace directory is always set to MCP workspace. Now we are going to define the tool that's going to help us run the commands on the terminal. So let's break down this function step by step. This is a decorator as we call it. And this registers the function as an MCP tool. This is what allows Claude for desktop or any MCP client to call this function as an external tool. This entire thing over here is what defines the function. This basically means that the function expects a string input, which is the shell command that it needs to execute. And this will be provided by the large language model as an input and it's going to be a string and the function will return a string back, which will contain the entire commands output or an error message, which you can see over here. This is the line that runs the command on the terminal. And this is what returns the output. We use a simple try except block over here to basically catch any errors that might happen. So if something unexpected happens, example, missing permissions, invalid commands, the error message is caught and returned as a string to your large language model. And you know, then the large language model can basically take a decision on that. All right. So now we're basically going to start the server and this starts the MCP server, allowing Claude to communicate with it. Let's save this file and head back to our terminal and let's now run this server. 
this command runs our Python script inside the virtual environment using UV. So that's all for our MCP server and now we need to connect it. Now we need to connect it to Cloud for Desktop. So let's open a new terminal, press command N for that. So for that we need to open the Cloud Desktop config.json file which is located at this path and we'll use Visual Studio Code to open that and press enter. This is a Cloud Desktop configuration file. Add this particular code in this file. This basically tells Cloud that there's an MCP server by the name of terminal and it's located at this particular directory and you can run it using this particular file using UV. In case you get some error in Cloud that you're not able to connect to the MCP server, just provide the full path to the UV installation. To do that, go to the terminal and type which UV and you'll get the path where UV is installed. This happens because Cloud might not be able to recognize the command UV in its own environment and so we provide the absolute path over here. Similarly, we provide the absolute path for our server directory as well. One more change would be to actually add async to the function definition over here, which is as per the practice followed on the Cloud website. Once you have done all this, you can actually go to Cloud and quit that and then open Cloud again. When you open it for the first time, it might take up to one minute to load, one or two minutes. So, and you might see a blank screen till that much time. But now you see this hammer icon over here and when you click on this, it basically says that, you know, there's th these MCP tools are available and there's a run command tool. And when we go to our VS code, we see that this is the tool that we actually added. And then uh, there's a definition over here, which says run a terminal command inside the workspace directory and the arguments are the command, the shell command to run and it returns the command output or an error message. And if you go over here, you can actually see that this is what the doc string that we had provided for our function over here. So now let's test this out. All right, so it says allow the tool from terminal local as you want to allow for this. So let's click allow for this chat. And what I've done is basically, can you create a directory called cloud output? make a file inside it called terminal underscore server underscore test dot txt and then it says you know i'll help you create directory and file is requested so let's ask claude can you open this using code the terminal server test dot txt file and let's before that add some text so can you add the text i successfully made my first mcp server to this file and then can you open this using code the terminal underscore server dot txt file okay. so let's send this message so here you have it so guys this is isn't this amazing you know you have made actually an mcp server that can actually run terminal commands and you used a large language model on an app which is your mcp client the cloud desktop app and you actually control your computer by creating a file adding some text to it with a smiley and then opening it in code so please do subscribe to my channel and like this video if you found this helpful i really find it amazing what all AI and large language models can do and I really want to bring this to other people around. So please do subscribe because that helps me bring more tutorials your way. Thanks a lot for watching.